something so incredible about Paisley Park and, and whenever people are able to go. Like, first of all, let me just take a quick second to, like, appreciate the amazingness that is my life that I get to go to Paisley Park before. You know what I mean? Like, that, like oh. that, I don't take that lightly in any sense of the word. Whenever people can go, like, please go. Yeah. And, like... And I hope that I hope that, that place like continues to flourish and become like like what it is, which is like a historical museum. Like you know what I mean? The, like the, the CDs was, that he's yeah. listening to are in there. Are in there. Oh wow. You know what I mean? They're like, what was he listening to? You know what I mean? Like like wow. like the 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 it's I just got chills thinking about art that he was looking at was on the table. You know what I mean? So mm. it's like it's a moment frozen in time. The the person that blew me away the most was Prince. See, I'm, I'm a rap artist, you know what I'm saying? So I'm on my rap shit, so we had a club. And uh, Prince comes in, this big security guard. He's like... He pointed at you and said, like, yeah. yeah. can't just say that, actually. Yeah. He, 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 yeah, like... like he, he OG'd? OG'd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he had a security, like, uh, 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 one of these tables, like, right. push, push it up, you know what I'm saying? And we sit over here and... Like, like, he pretty much backed half the club up with the table wow. and gave us our space. Wow. And talked to me for about maybe an hour. Wow. In the club. Mm. Why am I just playing? About only a masses. He explained how to, this gave Which him the symbol. Which he was, and yeah, he said, he was Yo. all about. I, I, I was fucked up. I was fucked up for a while behind that. It's because of that. But then Nas sat here Prince say, G, say, huh? and Nas said, I said, Nas, anybody ever front of you doing a song? And he said, nah, no one ever said that. Then he stopped himself. He said, yes. And I said, who? He said, Prince. I can see that. Prince came to him and, and Nas came to him and said, I want to do a song with you. And Prince said, do you own your masters? That's what And that, he said, Nas talking. did not own his masters. So he said, I can't do a record with you because I want you to own it. I don't want these people to eat on How crazy Yo, is Prince Ill, to say that back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, oh, so he explained uh, the symbol and everything. You got on your master, brother. I Prince want is a the one. To me, Prince, Prince is the one. He, Prince was the, he was the best. Best pop musician of all time. Musician, artist, just he, he was it. Like guitar playing, songwriting, singing, uh, just like his his uh his style you know what i mean like mm -hmm. everything and, and the thing about prince was that prince would go in the studio dolo and do the whole album and be like here now y'all play it like niggas ain't had to write prince songs prince was writing everybody else's songs he giving mm -hmm. hits to other niggas like prince was the real king of pop yeah. to me and i love michael jackson but prince is the king of pop mm. when i was little I copied the, the address of a Warner Brothers uh, record to send my demo to Prince when I was like eight. And Prince was always my favorite of just of all time. I, I wanted to be in his band. I used to act like I was Dr. Fink. People that know me in Columbus know that we used to have like these kind of Prince like cover lookalike bands and stuff. He, he's been, you know, my idol. He's been the, the number one in my music career. And so, so fast forward a little while later, L.A. Reid comes to me one day and he goes, yo, uh, do you want to go to Paisley Park? Prince wants us to come up. Like, no fucking way. And I'm like, I never really get super overwhelmed and stuff about, about nothing, but then I know it's Prince. He's like my idol. Walking into Paisley Park and I can see him coming on this long corridor and he's walking and he's got this cane. He, he comes up to me and he points his cane out. It's the first thing he ever said to me ever. He goes, Michael Jordan should make his own Nike. He's like, exactly, come with me. He takes me to this other room. He starts to, to give us a tour of Paisley Park. So he takes us to the first room, which is like, he says, see these, all these clothes in here? I make all these clothes. I get all my clothes made. See my perfume, wild, we make that. Shoes, we make everything. Make all your own stuff. Always make all your own stuff. So, all right, so now I'm going on stage, because I know not to go on stage with Prince, because he's going to battle you. I've seen him do it to Lenny. I've seen him do it other. He'll shut you down. He's such a good musician that you just feel like you just freeze up, you know? Who was your, who was your influence? Who, who were you into? Were you, like, who was your One Direction? My One Direction when I was younger had to be Prince. Oh. Prince was my One Direction. <laughs> no, I, that was the first album I bought was Purple Rain. And it came with a poster. Yeah, you open it up and you get this poster. And I put the poster on my wall and it was like, you know, sometimes I would kind of walk out the room and kiss Prince. <laughs> Give a little kiss, yeah? You know, yeah. another thing about Prince, remember there was a time recently that he made inroads, he revolutionized the, the MP3 movement and digital music, and we ran toe-to-toe -to -toe and buddies in trying to liberate music. He doesn't get the credit that, that he deserves for that, to make everybody get their music now on their phones or whatever. Brett, you knew Prince. What was he like? Man, he was incredible, man. He was just a great person to talk to. 
listen to. He gave you great advice. He ain't want no meat on his property, though. You could not eat no meat. You couldn't talk about no meat or nothing like that. One time we was at his house and they were serving some meat. And, man, that whole company had to pack up and get the hell out of there. He, he, he ain't played by no meat. Oh, wow. Just want to be, just want to be, just want to be. Baby, I'm just like my brother. You're never satisfied. Why do we shoot at each other? This is what it sounds like when the thugs cry. When the thugs cry. Prince was so cool. I've tried for years to make records for him. My first attempt at making a record for him uh, um, was fronting. Fronting was with Prince? That's crazy. That's why the You had the opportunity to work with him. He was like, no, I didn't, that you regret and that you should have worked with Prince. You bowed out from yeah. working with them? Was it like a demo tape or something? No, nah, they just asked me to work with them and I just like, what the fuck am I gonna do with them? What? What? Yeah. I was vice president at mm -hmm. A&R Warner Brothers. He came back in uh, uh, and I hope it was because he saw that Warner Brothers hired a nigga to be A&R. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> uh-oh, they get it. He, he stopped writing slave on his face. The talk was going around the office that he was coming back. Prince uh, Peoples came into my studio session one day and it was like, the man wants to uh, know if he could uh, see your rig right there. He wanted to know if he could use your rig for a minute. Like, the man, who's the man? <laughs> Prince. Like, hell yeah, man, I'm worried that shit. Go ahead, I don't give a fuck. I went in this room. He was, had it for like a few hours, four or five hours or whatnot. Prince, you know, he said, thank you. And, you know, uh, he appreciate, you know, being your hospitality, letting him use the shit. He said, Prince wants to, he also wants to know what do you drink. They go give me a bottle. They come back in, they was like, this quick this is from prince you know I'm pr i love prince my prince mm -hmm. is the greatest ever right and just work me and the engineers just in there and all like damn nigga prince touched this shit, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, touch my shit. <laughs> you know why prince gave me the song jail because he liked what i did and he's like i like what you did with them contracts you said prince gave it to you right. man he right. definitely guess who's going to jail tonight <laughs> you know what i'm saying a gemini just, spirit oh uh, well prince hit me when i uh had did uh work it and he seen that i had to look alike prince in there <laughs> right, right. and i was so scared because i thought he was finna let me have it <laughs> and he was so sweet and he said he loved the video it's amazing because i love prince i get a chance to see the genius genius in him because you know a lot of people didn't know how many instruments right. that prince played right in that you know prince produced all his stuff right true artist uh amazing like i i still listen to his music faithfully and even down to the mixing, not even just the records, but just the way they were mixed. I always thought if I was your girlfriend, record was incredible. Because I say people wasn't even hip to pitching the vocals up back then. And that's how far ahead right, right. he was. With, to, to, to say, this is what it sounds like when doves cry and you hear this noise. I'm like, yo, like this man thinking. <laughs> right, it's beyond. Next right, right. level next level so prince is gonna always he's just in history he's imprinted embedded in this like if you a real you about real artistry prince most definitely should be at the top of your list mcmillan and when we sat down prince was extremely interested in wanting to know more about hip-hop like he just wanted to learn now originally he didn't have a lot of love for hip-hop because he was trying to i don't think he really understood it but once we got together and once we started to share information, he would listen to the lyrics of different artists, ask me why they said this, said that. And he was really involved in wanting to know so much about hip hop. And because of our relationship, it gave him a much greater appreciation for it. Personally, we were both aligned with having a lot of love and appreciation for God. Relationship for music and artist rights. Sometimes the labels will control the messages that the artists were letting out. They wouldn't let the artists express themselves. And he was, he was always into artists having freedom of expression. All I think about is the purple hue used on the, the cover of Prince's 1999 album. This 1982 so technology was just coming into bloom. New synthesizers, the o Oberheim uh, synthesizer and the, the Lindrum, the Roger Lindrum. 
to which Prince was using at a whole nother level that no one else was even thinking about. I decided to take my monthly uh, lunch card money to buy a record that I wasn't allowed to buy, sneak it at home under my, my sweater and then listening to it uh, at low volume obsessively for like three months before my mom discovered it. Nobody cared more about freedom uh, that I know uh, than Prince. And you give a shout out to Prince uh, on the album, which, which really touched me. A lot of people don't know that you were his business partner. You were the last person he wanted to, uh, to, to do business with. After he beat the music industry, he wanted to be with you. Tell us about the significance of that relationship between Prince Rogers Nelson and Sean Jay Z Carter for you. Really deep for me. Just watch this guy and how brave he was. This man put slave on his face at a time where we all were like, man, Prince is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then to come to find out, oh, he was fighting for his masters the whole time. He was fighting for his freedom the whole time. And for him to come, he came to me. I didn't, I, I didn't even have the nerve to call him and say, like, he came to me and said, I know what you're doing. I'm going to give you all of my work. Like a person who fought for their work their whole entire life to come to your office and say, I know what you're doing here. It was a really deep thing for me. I, I, I saw it him. Okay. Because he came to my um, I Am album release party. And... You know, Prince is Prince. Yeah. Right. So was he floating? He was. <laughs> okay. He was. Okay. <laughs> he was. Yo, look, you know, let's do this. You know, let's, <laughs> let's do this song. And he was like, you know, do you own your masters? Oh. Oh, no. You move like a rock star. Where? Who did you see moving like that? And you're like, yo, I want to move like that. Or is it just like it's just in your DNA to just be on some rock star shit? It's definitely in my genetic makeup, <laughs> but like the people I grew up even like thinking that were, the people I even grew up and I thought they were legends, like it shows through them, like, you know what I'm saying, like Prince. One of my funny, funniest memories with Tupac is he would always have myself and my cousins and his sister, he would have us all um, perform Prince and the Revolution. He would always have us like, you know, setting up the stage and the stage being in the front of the living room. He would introduce the band very subtly, you know, and, and now he would introduce himself as well. And then we would come on and he would be all in his Prince glory, full out. You know, I asked him one day, how come he always gets to be Prince? And he was like, I'm out here getting us work. Are you, are you gonna be out here booking us jobs and getting us performances until you ready to be out here managing this group and taking us on tour, I'm gonna be Prince. And if anybody had a problem with me being Prince, they need to let me know. Nobody took issue with him. I love women, I'm not gonna lie. I love women with a passion. I do, I do. I feel like sometimes now I just be wanting to call Prince and just be like, can we hang? Because I love women like he loved women. 